Yeah, so this week I did a little uh, talky bit on driving your motorhome to Europe. And uh, it was met with some interest, to be honest. We had a few messages over it. Um, some people were saying a little bit more detail. So that sort of prompted me, again, maybe to uh, take another little uh, dive in and show you guys how we sort of operate our little trips. Uh, one, of, one of the... One of the um, messages we had on that vlog was uh, afternoon Josh I get called all sorts um, as always love your vlogs uh, partner wants to ask a couple of questions uh, the number one question was what chassis is your motor home so everybody knows I've got a Fiat Ducato uh, with the Burstner body and uh, would you consider doing a vlog on costs etc where you went to in Europe so I have a rough idea thanks Pauline and Jamie so um, yeah that kind of like okay so maybe there's a lot of people that still haven't been over that I know there's probably a lot of people that watch our channel that have um, ventured into Europe but maybe there's that little portion of people that haven't ventured across yet and I'm gonna try and um, maybe hit that little block of people that haven't uh, we always try and trim it back a little bit get them people if you need that information um so tonight matthew i have set my computer up and obviously the first thing you need to consider is booking your crossing so yeah so here we are on the euro tunnel website and basically i'm gonna just have a quick look at making a booking um so I'm looking to go to Folkestone to Calais and I want to go this August, September, October. I'm looking to make a crossing on the 22nd of October. And we're going to try and return on Sunday the 30th. There we go. So, let's continue there, and we're going to go The next thing they want to know is my uh, vehicle registration number, so if I've been, if uh, it's going to recognise my vehicle, and uh, here we're going to have to go into the category of 5.5 to 8 meters. Uh, will you be towing a trailer? No. And the fuel it runs on is a conventional diesel vehicle, country of residence, UK. So now it's going to fly up some times. And what I'm looking to do, again, what you need to be thinking about at this situation of the game is where you are travelling from in the UK. You've got to allow yourself a bit of time, wherever you're coming from, to get to Folkestone Euro Tunnel Terminal. Um, you want to sort of leave yourself a window of at li like two hours. Uh, we normally sort of leave ourselves two hours, and normally we get offered to get on earlier if we are like two hours early sometimes you know it all works out pretty well sometimes but i'm gonna look to go so the times obviously that are a little bit cheaper are the later times which is six o'clock to seven fifty nine which is nearly eight o'clock uh for one four five the the lowest there is eight o'clock to nearly 10 o'clock at night so convenient to me probably here for the four o'clock unless i take a gamble at the one four five make it six o'clock uh so six o'clock i arrive in france at seven o'clock and this time of year it's going to be just starting it's starting to get a bit dimpsier then so that's the other thing you've got to allow my sort of perfect timing probably would be the four o'clock so anyway let's fire on that four o'clock um and then it gives you the departure times a little bit more detail down the bottom so we're gonna hit on the um 16 20 
so we'll try that one and it's, i'm going to go for a standard ticket i'm not going to go for this refundable the flexi plus is mega money but um i'm going to go for that i'm trying to keep the cost down uh right i'm going to confirm that one the standard ticket and then i'm looking to get my self back uh a week just over a week later on the sunday so let's have a look and see what time so to be honest the lowest price is 142 and i could probably get on that nine f so 142 quid and i it gives you eight o'clock in the morning to 9 59 so that is quite a nice time for me because i would normally be maybe somewhere like uh maybe an hour from the ferry port so if i if i'm getting close to 10 o'clock um that would be a reasonable time for me to allow me to have a bit of a line in the morning get up have a little bit of breakfast and get down there so i'll hit on that one and then the options then let's see what happens here i'm gonna go for the 950 so on this did, did you see that where I'm, I'm scrolling along to get the later time and so for 142 950 in the morning let's hit on that confirm and continue so this is coming in at 299 pounds and then it's going to give me a full little itinerary of what i'm getting for my standard 157 saturday leaving folkestone at 20 past four in the afternoon and arriving at five to six um so that's a reasonable time i could potentially five to six by the time i get off maybe quarter past six i could be probably parked up on the camper park in bruges for possibly half past seven in the evening and that would be on the saturday night so that would be quite a nice time to get across and then again on the return for 142 leaving uh just over a week later on the sunday and this would make a nice little sort of like Halloween trip. It, depending, um, you know, I can always catapult these forward a little bit if I want to go a week later. This is hovering around half term time, I believe. So I don't know whether it will change a little bit um, if I don't go on half term. But anyway, let's see what happens. So that's departing at 9.50 in the morning. Um, that's 10 to 10 and arriving back in the UK at 9.25 bearing in mind for me then I've got a four and a half hour drive ahead of me so I can probably still get home just after dinner mid-afternoon with maybe a breather but the thing to consider is obviously that's what you got to remember on the Saturday look, I can have a nice little bimble up um, and uh, 20 past four nice saturday evening into the evening quite a nice little time um and then like i say then i'll be looking to park up somewhere like bruges camper park and uh, maybe on the way back again i could p potentially be in bruges or another camper park we're just going to have a look at this for the booking side of things right the next window i'm going to open is this one that which is dfds the ferry to go on the ferry so let's have a little look dover to calais select your vehicle it's going to be a motorhome and uh, one good thing about having a seven meter motorhome let i come into the category of this one down here which is the uh, seven meter cat category for motorhomes and we're looking to go for two people and i'm looking to go let's click along to october the 22nd Uh, and then returning on the Sunday, the 30th of October. Let's book now. Right, let's see what this compares like. So, be careful. So this, it starts off, look, it's on the Saturday morning at 15 minutes past midnight on the Saturday. I want to get right around to this kind of time. This kind of time here, look, it's going to be four o'clock um let's have a look 
so the four o'clock is going to Dunkirk, which is a two hour crossing. Um, not bad. Four o'clock, a little bit further up the coast from Calais. Um, it's just options, really. Um, so let's have a look at the Calais one. It's a little bit later. What about what about that one then? So they're all coming in at one twenty. There, look. They're all coming in at one hundred and twenty quid. What about? Let's go for the. 20 to 3. See if I can squeeze that one. Okay, 20 to 3. There it is. So, one motor home, uh, 7 meters, two adults. Um, okay, so we'll have that one and then we'll continue. And the next one is coming back. So, let's have a little look again. So, this is the Sunday now, the 30th. And we're looking to go around 10 o'clock. 10.30. Coming in. My 10.30 there. Is coming in at 98. Right, let's hit the button. So, the total on that is 218 quid. 218 quid so there's your comparison um yeah so that that gives you with going with the ferry a little bit extra time uh, going across um so you're looking at uh, 55 minutes on the way out extra to be on the ferry 55 minutes on the way back but it's still it's a saving of 81 quid which is not bad really and on the ferry you can it gives you options to go into the premier lounge <laughs> let's have a look Yeah, so if you look at the area here, which is premium lounge, it is 15 quid per passenger. So if I went for, yeah, so another 30 quid. Uh, 30 quid, that takes me up to 248. Yeah, so that premium lounge is going to pump up the price to 248, but I'm still going to be making a saving of 51 quid over the Euro Tunnel. The Euro Tunnel is quick and effective, but if occasionally we did that ferry the other day, as you saw on some uh, that previous video, travelling across with the ferry, and it wasn't bad. And with this premier lounge thing, I can get. Uh, complimentary hot and cold drinks, complimentary refreshments, a glass of Prosecco, comfortable seat in TV and sea views. Let's have a look, view photo. There you go. And occasionally I've done this on the way out. You know, we've sat in the, pr the premium lounge and uh, we've enjoyed a nice, so it's a good feeling when you're on your way out, it's um, Saturday afternoon, chilling out in here. We've been across in these before and there's been, uh, no, I think nobody there. And we were having endless coffees, beautiful cappuccinos. We were having our glass of Prosecco. Uh, we were having our biscuits and some fruit, I think that was there, but um, not to be sneezed at. Anybody want to join us on the ferry? Come in the Premier Lounge with us. So, uh, 248 quid. Um, over and back, Premier Lounge as well. It's not a bad deal. I don't think that's a bad deal. Uh, I'm looking to maybe go across around that area. Uh, nothing's planned as yet uh, for... Um, time you know the actual dates and stuff i'm gonna have a little whiz around see what i can come up with but uh, what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna end this video here um and we'll then continue at looking where we're gonna possibly what we're gonna probably do i i get a little bit where um maybe on the friday i'll say to caroline should we go tonight and she'll say why are you going tonight because i know a lovely little um Brit stop uh, with a craft brewery attached to it, not that far from the Euro Tunnel. I know a nice pub on the near Basingstoke. 
you, do you know what I mean? So you can sort of almost extend your holiday a little bit before. We always do that. I always do that. I'm terrible for it. Um, and then, and that is a really good feeling. You sort of like, if you have a nice little uh, Friday night, wake up, a little bit of shopping down at Sainsbury's, down at Ashford or something, um, do a bit of last minute shopping, um, run on down to the Euro Tunnel, or the, um, either the Euro Tunnel or the ferry, which, which I'm, I'm getting a little bit steered back to the ferry because I'm sort of talking myself into this premium lounge, glass of Prosecco, live in the dream, put your feet up, see if you... Okay, we'll end the video there and then we'll uh, come back and uh, check out some more stuff about when we get the other side, pre, pre you know, pre, the, a couple of places that we stop. But like I say, if you're watching this video and you fancy doing something like this, just have a little play with the times. You always bear in mind that track. You know, you if you're coming from Manchester, you can come on down through, have a pub stop somewhere. You can. You, there we go. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you're getting inspired a little bit. I'm feeling, I'm feeling inspired again already. I'm feeling inspired. I start getting on the uh, Euro Tunnel DFDS, and uh, then there's a trip developing. We'll catch you soon. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you soon.